Can you keep a secret? I'm sorry, but I meant to do like uh, an intro to the new video where I show you how to use timelines together with paths. But I have no idea at all how to do that intro. Maybe we just pretend this never happened and go straight to it, shouldn't we? All right, good evening. Or, I don't know if it's evening wherever or whenever you are watching, but uh, hello. My name is Alex, this is GM Learning, where I will show you something cool with GML and Game Maker Studio 2. All right, today we try something new. For the first time I didn't like completely planned what I will be doing, but instead I will just be improvising on the fly because I know what I want to show you I just didn't make any plans how to show it to you so I will just get into it and maybe afterwards do some editing work um, to make it all nice and neat and everything but yeah what we will be doing is I will show you something to like I will show you how to work with paths and how to how you can manipulate objects to have like events depending on how far they advanced on their path sounds crazy but it's actually really easy usually people just don't seem to get the idea that they can do this in GML so let's get right into it let's start by moving to the left because that's where the resource tree belongs in my opinion to the left I will populate the sprites with some sprites all right we have three sprites red green and blue one of those will be used for our player object which can be whatever it is uh, whatever name so this is a play I call it player can be an enemy it can be whatever you want it to be in your game and also a room we have a room let's have a look at the size mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah let's run this Okay, so that's that. Nice. Let me very quickly put those away. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. What do we need? We need a path. Just some random path. which we will actually use the room editor. Because I usually find it easier to draw a path in the actual room editor, so you know what's happening hmm. Hmm. why not and yeah let's go back so this is our path let's close it should we close it we don't close it now we will just work with it like this let's give it a name P hmm. PTH way. <laughs> it's the way to go. Okay. And what we will actually need is a timeline. So we name this TL path. Loop. So the player.
very easy. Upon creation, basically whenever you want to, but we for this example we do it in the creation event. Uh, assign it a path. So path start. way speed let's make it four pixels and action mm, let's just make it stop for simplicity sake and absolute absolutely at least for this example so, this assigned to the create event. Let's put player object into the room. No, not on this layer. But on the instance layer, of course. So, we put it to the left right, uh, uh, to, to the left right, to the top left, and when we start now, what should happen is that it should automatically move like this, exactly. Yeah, okay. An object moving along a path. Big deal, I know, right. So, as I said in the beginning, what we are going to do now is we make things happen along the way, along the path. Um, so, in case you didn't know or knew every path in game maker in GML has a um, uh, or every instance has a path position so every instance that has a path assigned to it has an has a position and this is bit either zero at the beginning and it's one at the end. So keeping this in mind in the step event while we are moving along this path position it will change to um, yeah, gradu gradually change from zero to one. It will change back from 1 to 0 if you move like backwards, uh, if you have like this back path backwards end action enabled so that it moves, moves back and forth. And what we can do with this, we can use this to our advantage. So you can either manually set the path position that way and move it to like half of a path which would be 0.5. But we can also get the path pro position from this. And what we can also do is we can assign a timeline to the instance. But instead of having the timeline advance by time, you know, like one step every step, we actually use the path position to advance the timeline. Pretty damn easy, as I said, but uh, cool nevertheless. So, timeline index for this instance is TL path. However, in order to make this not uh, run automatically, we set the speed to zero. So, quick refresher on timelines. You have moments, for example, moment 50. Um, we change, or let's, let's make an earlier. Let's make like 15, moment 15. We change the sprite index to Let's say green. And at now let's use fifty. Uh, 
what am I doing? No, not image, sprite index. We change to sprite uh, red, back to red. And then again at 60, change. Yet again, I can't type today, sprite index. Uh, what didn't we have yet? Blue and green. Red. Blue. Again? No, what did I have? Green, red, blue. Okay, that's that's all the colors. Um, yeah, and we just duplicate this and set it to green again at 75. Set it to... Set it to red again at like 80. Um, yeah, so usually this would work if we have timeline speed one. Every step, so it starts at zero, timeline position zero by default. Um, so every step we add one. And when we are at 15, this action is called when we are at 15, 50, this action is called, and so on and so forth. But because we set the speed to zero, it doesn't work this way. However, so what we do is we set manually the timeline position to be whatever the path position is times 100. So Remember, it's between one and zero, uh, zero and one, the position. If we take it times 100, it's between zero and 100. And this way we can like do it like more, more in a more fine-tuned way. You see, because that allows us to use more actions because there are more moments between one or zero and 100 than there are between one and zero. Makes sense? So, and actually what we have to do is just add timeline running to true to make sure it's running. And what I did wrong here is we have to put this into the step event because obviously the timeline position has to be checked every step right so again we have to, the timeline index is the, the path timeline path the speed is zero but it is running this has to be true in order for it to run at all and then every step we check the position so if we now change Simple enough, it follows. And look at this. These are just the things we added to the timeline. Very simple. Um, just use your imagination. You can use this for basically almost everything. Um, you can attach a timeline to an object and don't use the, the steps. Use the pos position of a path. So far, that's it. Thank you for being here. If you think this video helped you, then please leave a like and even more than leaving a like, please subscribe. If you, however, think this tutorial totally sucked, then drop a dislike, punish me. In any case, just do something awesome with Game Maker Studio 2. Like, live out the dream, be creative, and create, do something awesome. I hope I helped you just a little bit more by showing you this little approach. So far, take care. Bye-bye.